moving, moving. Oh, they're disapproving. Keep them doggies moving, oh. Don't try to understand them. Just hope I'm growing random. So we'll be living high and wide. My heart's calculating. My true love will be waiting. Be waiting at the end of my ride. Move them on, hit them up, hit them up, move them on, move them on, hit them up, raw high. Let them out, ride them in, let them in, let them out, cut them out, ride them in, raw high. How about you, Wish? Um, how about me, what? We're going in. You're always talking about how you need a bath. What day is this? It's Friday. Well, who ever heard of anybody taking a bath on Friday? I think I'll just wait until the day the good Lord intended me to. <laughs> you find me any worms? How long do you think we'll be here, Mr. Roddy? Uh, I don't know much. We're a good week ahead of schedule. Got plenty of grass here. We might as well fatten them up a bit. You know, it don't seem normal, Rowdy. They have good grass, good weather, no hurry, nothing wrong. I don't know. Well, we're short a man, Quince. Maybe you can find me a man out here in the middle of nowhere. Huh? Good morning. That's been that way since sunup. Saw you heard about a quarter mile back. Figured there must be fresh water around. I ran out a day or two ago. Go ahead, help yourself. Trail boss? The ramrod, Roddy Yates. Hey, don't we know each other from somewhere? Could be. John Shepard. Colonel, don't you remember me? I was with you in the summer of 61. I, I was Private Yates then. You're my prisoner in Arizona. Shepard? The Rock of Chancellorville? I was a Chancellorville. What was a Southerner doing way out in Yuma? I was visiting friends in the Arizona Territory. 
When the fighting started, they had Yates and me in irons. That's the first we knew there was a war on. Yeah, that happened to a lot of us then. Well, how'd you get out of Yuma, Mr. Shepard? He took a broomstick and carved a gun, bluffed his way past half the garrison. Matter of luck, I'm afraid. Whatever it was, it's a pleasure to know you, Colonel. Jim Quince. Quince. Say, uh, Colonel, the way you used to talk about Virginia all the time, I'm surprised to see you this far west. A man's got to make a living. The way I feel about the North, I'm not about to start making it up there. Heard you say you could use another handwriting herd. We can use you. Hey, Gerard! I ain't enough coffee but for one cup, Quince. I got here first to shove off. Well, gone one thing about you, you're a dependable cuss. I ain't never heard you say a polite word to yet. Well, don't listen for one. Well, get out of that shell and come on meet a great man. Might do you some good. What man? Colonel John Shepard. He was a commander that held Chancellorville. I know him better than you do. Well, come on, then. I wouldn't spit on his shoes. I beat my way across Arkansas. Got down to New Orleans. From there, I caught a boat to Atlanta. Joined up there with General Lee. How come he didn't bust out, Mr. Rowdy? Short of his broomsticks. <laughs> <laughs> no, he just couldn't give up that fine prison food. <laughs> it's in your favor. Oh, well, this is your boss. Bienvenido, senores. Thank you, boss. Well, let's have young, senor. And you? No, don't ask. We ran into some bad news. Screaming for beef up north. There's supposed to be three big herds pushing up behind us. There are no more laying around lakes. We'll take everything we got to stay ahead. And I have some good news, senor. We found a new drover. Out here? It was the purest accident, just luck. There he is with senor Rowdy. His name is Shepard. His name is what? John Shepard. You know him? Yeah, but not as John Shepard. I heard a new man. So I heard. This is uh, Colonel John Shepard, Mr. Favor. Howdy. Howdy. Oh, this here's Clay Forrester, Colonel. Hello, Rankin. Rankin? Yeah, that's the name he used uh, up in the Dakotas. You know him? Uh, by reputation and smell. He's a bounty hunter. What are you talking about? I've known him for a long time. His name's John Shepard. Am I wrong, mister? Right as rain. I was in Deadwood the night you shot the Pecos kid in the back. How much did you make on the kid? The same amount you'd have made if you'd had the guts to take him. Pardon me while I go get sick. And for once, wish it isn't because of your cooking. Bounty hunter. The matter, Yates? You feel like getting sick, too? Oh, I just don't understand why. Because I don't want to tire my back picking rags. Is that reason acceptable to you? If I was a rag picker, I'd take that as an insult. Would you now? Somebody ought to slap a brand on his face so everybody would recognize him. Who wants to start heating the iron, you? You? Or how about you, with your large, fat mouth? What about the rest of you? Any of you want to help cleanse me of my sins? You're all so righteous looking, we ought to start a new religion. Call it the gospel, according to St. Drover. <laughs> you find something amusing, Trail Boss? Well, uh, let's say I recognize the group portrait. You got a comment to make on my occupation? Not unless you got one to make on mine. Rankin, or Shepard, or whatever you're calling yourself these days. You're just bound to start a conversation with that big, fat mouth of yours, aren't you? Rankin, I don't like your kind. I never have. What kind am I? 
You're a murderer. I wouldn't talk about murderers if I were you, Forrester. I never killed a man because I got panicky, because I was careless, or because I got drunk. Man had a price on his head. I brought him in the same as any of the rest of you would have done if you weren't shaking too bad to pull the trigger. Just for the record, the last man I hunted down was the baker's kid. That was six months ago. I'm through with all of that. Since then, I've been looking for work. That's why I'm here, to work at punching cattle. We move out at Senna. You'll ride drag. He's a bounty hunter. He's worse than that. He's an animal. Without any feelings, without any inside. You're on. There's a couple of herds on our trail. I want you to backtrack, find out how many and how close. Now? Now! Well, it looks like we're going to be working together again after all, Yates. How in the world do you figure a man like that anyway? Rock at Chancellorsville. What happened? What happened to make him give up bounty, huh? Well, who said he quit except him? If he hasn't quit, that brings up a mighty interesting question. Who's he after? Strung out like a clothesline. Still seem to want to move. Look on drag side, Shepard. Quince, Scarlet, and Jenkins? Back there. I imagine they're afraid of getting their backs to me. Oh, poor. You can hold down this section all by yourself? Yeah, any objections? Oh, no, you're doing fine. You didn't hear me when I said we're going to pick up this snail's pace? Well, we've been doing a little talking, Mr. Perry. You've been doing a little. Uh, that explains it. I wondered what you've been doing. You sure ain't been working. Mr. Faber, we want you to get rid of Shepard. Want what? We want you to get rid of him. Well, I heard, I heard. We don't have to work with murderers. You were too squeamish to shake his hand when he first came into camp. Yeah, well, I never closed my eyes all night on account of him. Oh, all right, all right. Now, suppose he is still collecting bounty. You got a price on your head, Jim? No. Scarlet? Nope. Well, just the same, you ought to get rid of him. What for? He's the only man in the whole drive who's pulling his weight. Anything more to say? No, I guess not. Shepard's still hunting? Well, I ain't seen him shoot nobody yet. He didn't have much of a chance to. Jump one of our men, he'd have the whole crew on him. Well, I'd ask you the same question I asked them. Figure you got a bounty on your head? Who knows? Everybody's got something in their past they're a little ashamed of. Well, then who are you to judge him? Nobody. I'll give a plug nickel what a man's done before I hire him. As long as he does his job, it's good enough for me. Shepard does a good job. Well, I agree, but you're still gonna have trouble with the men. And we'll give him trouble right back.
here. What's this, deluxe service? Can't let a man starve, any man. Set it down and get out. Take it back. There are some I'd let starve. Cottonmouth bite that fellow. The poor snake had blowed up and die. Well, you said the same thing about Gerard yesterday, Wishbone. Come to think about it, though, they are two of a kind. Does uh, anybody know anything about Senor Gerard? Where he worked? Where he came from? No. 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 I sure don't. You know, talking about Gerard, a kind of funny thing happened yesterday. I was down the lake and Gerard come by. He didn't see me, but he looked all around and he threw something in the water. Probably a couple of Wishbone's biscuits. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. Why don't you go on the stage? Well? Uh, well, it didn't sink right away. So you fished it out. No, it was floating right there in front of me. Well, come on, what was it? It was an undershirt. A what? Yeah, an undershirt with the name Graceman printed across the back of it. Graceman? What's Graceman? It's a prison just outside Deadwood. Well, that's why Gerard almost jumped out of his skin when he saw Shepard yesterday. Sure. He knows him all right. I know the name of Rankin up in the Dakotas. You figure he escaped? Maybe he's the one Shepard's after. Now, if he is, why didn't Shepard follow him south? Maybe he's waiting for a better time. One thing's sure, nobody could be as mean as Gerard without his hiding something. Something in his past, Mr. Wishbone? Yes, yeah, something in his past. Like the time when you poisoned all them people. What's this? What are you talking about? Well, that, uh, that time in Missouri when you poisoned that whole farm full of men. I never did. How did you hear that? Well, you told me in your sleep last night. And you listened? Well, you kept shaking me awake to tell me all over again, Mr. Wishbone. Wait a minute, Wishbone. You poisoned a whole farm? Well, nobody died. At least I don't think so. I was younger than Mushy and it was my first cooking job. Well, I thought I'd give everybody a treat, so I went out and picked a whole bucket full of mushrooms. At least I thought they was mushrooms. Anyway, I took off and never went back. Well, if uh, somebody did die, there could be an old poster out right on you. All right, let's face it. There could be a poster out on any one of us. There's no poster on me. Oh, come off it, Clay. You could have got liquored up and wiped out a whole town. Well, I have, even, even if you ain't. A pack of us tore up a saloon down on the Rio Grande and left two dead. At least that's what they say. You mean you don't know? Nope. It's too full of red eye. Well, maybe confession's what we need. Anybody else? Gentlemen. Draw on you. 
Pull it up. Burke and Kittredge. Then you're better off too, I think. Maybe that's who he was drawn on. Did you see him telling him? I told you I was through with that business. Uh -huh. We heard. Cowboy, if I had a conscience as black as yours, I'd put a bullet in my brain. There's nothing wrong with my conscience, mister. Nothing? That was a fair fight. What was? I told you that big fat mouth of yours would get you in trouble. What fight? A wrangler up in Montana. Tried to take a girl away from me, I killed him. There were some posters out of me for a couple of months, till I cleared myself. That you can't pull them all back. Well, if you're all cleared... He's not gonna take the time to check on that. I don't intend to stand around until he puts a bullet in my back. Strap on that gun, mister. You wanna draw on me? Put it on! I'm strapped, cowboy. Shepard! Bad policy yelling like that, trail boss. You almost lost yourself a scout. What's it all about? Well, Mr. Clay told Mr. Shepard to strap on his gun. Oh, no. You really that tired of living? It's a private fight. We got no time for fights, private or public. All right, let's break it up. Go on. Well, there's still some coffee. Anybody want any? And now it starts, huh? I tell you, I never even seen his hand move. That gun just seemed to jump out off by itself. You're lucky Mr. Faber stopped it, Clay. No, it's not stopped. It's just delayed. What makes you so sure it's you he's after? Oh, it's me, all right. Well, hold on there. Wishbone may have a point there. In fact, uh, he could have seen an old poster on me, too. I was uh, in the Oklahoma Territory playing poker, and this fella dropped the fifth ace. Beat him up pretty bad. He could have died. I, I don't know. Well, I helped you. Remember that? That's right. My sin, I think, was the worst of all. Yours? See, I was working on a rancho in Texas. There was a horse the patron said nobody was to ride. Too wild. But I took him out one morning when I thought I was alone. The patron had a little girl, six years old. She ran up, and the horse... I... I said the horse had gotten out by himself. But maybe the Patron knew I was lying. Jenkins? Yeah, it happened back in Dodge about six or seven years ago. I was drunk, sleeping it off in a flop house. I felt somebody trying to steal my boots, so I hit him with a bottle. What well, did you? Did it kill him? I don't know. I didn't stick around to find out. You see, that's what I mean. Isn't any one of us in the clear? Maybe not. But it's me he's been baiting. It's me he wants. Three hands down and the worst part of the drive still ahead. Well, I'll get after him. What for? Well, we can't spare him. What are you going to do? Chain him to the herd? Mr. Faber. Hmm? Huh? Wasn't Burke on the stand the night watch? Yeah, him and Kittredge. Who's going to take his place? Uh, me and one of the other ones that left, Fedorov. If you don't mind, all the same to you, I'd like to take Fedorov's place. No need to go martyred on me, Shepard. They'd have quit whether you'd come along or not. You know better than that? Do as you please. Unless you're afraid to be alone with me, Ramrod. I get my gear.
over here. All right. They seem almost too quiet. Well, they're tired. It's the only thing about pushing them hard, they sleep good. There's the opposite of men. Remember once at Chancellorville? May. Night about like this. The army half dead on its feet. And nobody was sleeping. Well, they had war to think about. That's one thing about these cattle. Ain't got much to fret them. You still alive, Roddy? Still alive? I don't know, Shepard. You're turning into a big disappointment to my men. They're bound to determine you're a big-time killer, and you ain't doing nothing to prove it. Maybe I ought to start running around with a knife between my teeth. Hey, now, that might help. Seriously, how big a blow is it to the drive, losing three men like that? I will survive it. Maybe I ought to cut out before you lose more. There's a town just north of here. You could ride in with me and pick up your replacements. Hey, now, you trying to get me alone? You're too quick, Mr. Favor. Besides, I thought you needed the job. It was. Yeah? Well, uh, the men, uh... And what about him? You giving you trouble? Yeah. See what I mean? It's best I quit. I didn't say nothing about quitting. First thing you two know, you'll be sitting out here all alone with nobody to talk to but me and 3,000 cows. Why don't you be sensible? Look, Shepard, nobody tells me how to run my drive. Not you, not them. I'll see you in the morning. man. Good stubborn streak. Yeah, well, you gotta have a stubborn streak to run this outfit. <laughs> Sometimes a stubborn streak keeps you going. It's good for a man when he runs out of pious expressions like patriotism, goodness, piety. Maybe it's none of my business, Colonel. Then why don't you keep your mouth shut? Yeah, you're probably right. Gates. Sometimes I talk a little sharper than I intend to. I guess that's new to you since Yuma. Yeah. Maybe that's what comes of losing a war. I'm still curious about one thing. Yates. What happened, Colonel, huh? What happened where? I've done nothing I'm ashamed of. Haven't you? I told you I don't pick rags. There's dirtier ways of making a living. Living, that's a key word, Yates, living. I was born owning 1,200 of the finest acres in Virginia, fields, barns. I lost all that with the war. That's what happened, I lost it but I'll get it back. I don't care what the price. They took your land? They took everything. They burned every stick, every leaf of tobacco. They killed my wife. Oh. You want to know what the real nightmare is, Yates? You know who killed Ali? The Southerners, the deserters. I buried her up in the hill where the house used to be. But now I can't even put flowers on her grave till I buy the land back. I see. Well, don't you strain your eyes about it like you said yourself. It's none of your business. No, it isn't, Colonel. And it's a complex animal, Yates. Yeah, you're right. Animal enough to murder for a living and complex enough to quit when he knows it's wrong. Well, Mr. Faber was right. We'll stick with you if we have to drive these moss horns to Kansas by ourselves.
Well, this is it, Jenkins. Place at noon camp. Murderers like to do a little cattle rustling on the side every now and then. Well, fine. Let's take them back in. Soup's on. Yates with you? Nope. All alone, Mr. Favor? All alone. Now's your big chance. Mr. Favor! Mr. Favor! Fine. Hell of a herd's mostly rumor. There's one about 20 miles back, but it ain't fast and it ain't big. That should teach us a lesson, Mr. Faber, not to anticipate trouble. Hey, you go on back and eat, Gerard. We can take these strays in. You think you'd be safe with me? If he don't turn his back. Come on. I think you better get back to camp. Now what? The clay's trying to take over the herd. On account of me? Yep. I couldn't join them, senor boss. No matter how I feel against this man. Wishbone's putting up an argument, but that ain't doing too much good. Hey, let's go. What about the strays? Leave them. <laughs> Sign up in yet? No, but it won't be long. Well, I wish. Have you made up your mind? Yep. For or against? Against? Wish what's come over you. You were the one that was yelling the loudest about Shepard. About Shepard, but not against Mr. Favor. Look, Wishbone, all we want him to do is send Shepard away. That's all. All? Oh, that's an awful lot. That's like saying, all right, Mr. Favor, you be the boss and we'll tell you what to do. It's Shepard or it's me or any one of us. And I'm not running away now and out of my time of life. All right, you just start pushing Gil Favor too far, and you might find out you can't run. Now, if he wants to start a fight, we'll have to finish it. Well, let's not be too sure. He isn't just exactly alone, you know. He's got Rowdy and Shepard and Jesus and me. That's five. Six, Mr. Wishbone. Six. Six against 11. Ten. Batten isn't on anybody's side. I'll be the audience. I'll sit back and applaud. I want to tell you one thing, Gerard. If I thought for one minute you're the one we're protecting, I'd throw you to Shepherds of Bastard curl your hair. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Quince. I'm as clean as a newborn babe. New from where? Graceman Prison? 
Clay, suppose he is the one. Supposing Gerard busted out of Graceman. I was parole. Be some joke, wouldn't it? Us getting in a gunfight to save Gerard's skin. He don't want me. If he does, it's a, it's a mistake. Oh. Yeah. Well, it might be. Isn't that half of what we've been afraid of? Did that bounty hunter kill his man before he could get him into court? What if there is some mistake? Now we can make him promise to take Gerard in alive. Ain't nobody taking me nowhere. What's going on here? Shepard. Gerard, your man. I said nobody ain't taking me nowhere. Now, hold on now, Gerard. Look, hold it, will you? Put the gun down. Let me see. Let me see. I've seen a lot worse. Washing, grab some of those shirts in the back of the wagon. I'll take care of it. You two get out there, check them, and try and keep them bunched. You know, Wishbone, you handle a knife better than most army surgeons, I remember. How yeah, come some carving for too many empty bellied drovers? How does it look? Well, he's gonna live, but he ain't gonna be much good for a while. By the way, Shepard, was Gerard your man? Nope. He knew you. He sure, that was the reason he was a guest at Graceman for a few years. He was my eighth bounty. Pretty good price, too. Mr. Faber, Mr. Hastings says we need help. That shot got the cattle off, old jumpy. All right. Wish you come on with us. Shepard, you stay with Roddy. Gone after him. Wagon. Shepard, I... I believed you. Last lesson in life, Yates. Don't believe in anything. Dodge is a lie. Not according to a sheriff up in Cornelius County. Yeah, well, that sheriff must be crazy. He must be twice as crazy thinking you can take Mr. Favor in. I need that 2,000 off of that. Not brave, you ain't. Look, I... 
easy boy. He's passed out. Probably the best thing. Sometimes the pain from a wound like that drive a man clear out of his mind. Yeah. Good to see you, Ben. We're going to see about you, Mr. Faber. Oh, well, 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 well. Is this what Rowdy was trying to tell me about? That's right. Matter, there ain't a word of truth in this. Never heard a wanted man say anything different. Not true. Cornelius County, where's that? East of here, away is. Man came from there. His brother's sheriff. His brother's putting the reward up out of his own pocket. Standard. Standard. Drove him one of your crews. Last season? Could be. Standard? Oh, Tom Standard? Sounds like the name he gave you. Yeah. Hmm. Ah. Just drop it. The belt. All right, now move away. Sheriff making a personal thing out of it? Yeah, I'm sure he is. <laughs> Funny thing is, I didn't kill him. Did my best to save him. He was crossing White River. Gurn knocked Tom off his horse. By the time I got to him, he was drowned. Don't believe it? What does it matter? Well, if I'm telling the truth, it's wrong, ain't it? I'm paid to bring a man in, not to judge his crime. No, a man that uh, ain't got the sense to judge right from wrong, weigh the facts in the case. He ain't much of a man. Right or wrong's a matter of opinion. You know how much you mean to me? Paper said 2,000. More than that. It's my last entry in the bank book. After this, I go to a courthouse outside of Richmond, and I buy back my land. Stop the killing? And maybe. Though I might buy some foxes. So you figure to go from killer to gentleman just by changing the address? I never was a murderer. It's a matter of opinion again. Not a matter of opinion, it's a fact. I shot the baker's kid like you'd shoot a mad dog, but the last three men I brought in, I brought in live. Maybe you're not up to killing anymore, even when you got to. I wouldn't count on that favor if I were you. Well, you had me alone in the gully, why didn't you shoot then? A lot easier taking me in slung across the saddle than sitting in. Gerard came along. And you couldn't shoot him, either? It's strange. It seems like you're getting sick of the killing, and yet you sow it like grain wherever you go. Sow it? Well, Clay and the others most likely gonna kill Gerard. It's not my business. Yes, it is yours. You started them off. Now, they want to give you Gerard like a present so you get off the backs. You turn them into bounty hunters. How do you like that? They're grown men. They know what they're doing. No, they can't. They're prejudging just like you. Now, there's a difference. They're outside the law. I'm in it. They're after a man because he's cold and mean. He's different. They don't like that. But there's no justice to their chase. Oh, if there isn't yours. You know, I could shoot you now and say you tried to resist arrest. But if you want to give me your word, you won't try to escape. Nope. Baby, why don't you think this thing through? Use some common sense. Go back up, talk to that sheriff, tell him how the man was killed. Would he go to the trouble of rounding up witnesses, or would there just be a lynch in some dark night? You might hire me to round up some witnesses. But you ain't got the time. You're going back to your plantation. Right now, I ain't either. I got a herd to sell. As soon as I get it sold, I'll take my witnesses and go back and see Standard on my own. Time's passing, favor. I ain't got it to waste. I suppose not. Get on your horse. Oh? Hmm? Look, trail boss, whatever friendship there was between us, don't count on it anymore. I ain't counting on friendship, just common sense. Move. To what? A lynching? Oh, I might as well stay here and take my chances. Shepard, here comes your present, huh? wrapped and ready. What the devil? That's close enough, Forrester. What's going on? Now, what does it look like? Treat the wrong possum. 
You mean it's you he wants, Mr. Favor? Seems like. But you ain't done nothing. Well, that makes Gerard and me even, don't it, Jim? Gerard's clean. He's already paid for what he did. What about you, Jim? Untie him. Get on, Gerard. Look, I'm real sorry. I Forget it. I guess I had it coming to me. Maybe I didn't. It's done. Yeah. You know what this is costing me, Favor? Not as much as it could have behind you. Anytime you want to get in a poker game, I'll back you to the limit. What are you going doing? Oh, I don't know. Maybe go down to Mexico. Like you say, a man can't go back. Not to bounty hunting, not to broomstick guns, and not to Virginia. Oh, it ain't such a bad direction. Why don't you save that sermon for your crew? Might help straighten out their halos. Hit him up, hit him up, move him on, move him on, hit him up, raw high. 